look like that to some, but we know that you're on a path to glory and that you are reforming us, changing us, and building us up. Building us up into a church, building us up into a congregation that worships you and that serves you, Lord. So right now, Lord, we ask that you bless this message. May it speak to your people. May you open their minds and open their hearts to receive this message. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Like I had a pretty good idea about this message, so I'm going to do it. Merry Christmas, everyone. What is Christmas? I mean, we've heard Pastor Wendell's sermon before, right? Santa, no Santa Claus. That shouldn't be worshiping Santa Claus or Frosty the Snowman, but the question is, what should we be looking towards? Or what should we be thinking? Or how should we be acting as Christians during this time of season? Because this is about Christ. This is about the living God, the one that came to this earth. God had a prophecy, God had a prophet in the Old Testament that talked about our Lord and Savior. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14 says, Therefore, the Lord Himself will give you a sign. The Lord Himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. God accomplished this prophecy that was done so many years before that in Luke chapter 2. I don't know if how many of you guys watched Charlie Brown Christmas, but speaking of that, you know, I was uh, talking to Micah about how I used to celebrate Christmas and how I grew up and how like all Hallmark Channel television station Stories, you know, you leave the cookies for Santa Claus, and my mom loved. Uh, I, I love this one about my mom. My mom said, you know, don't leave uh, milk. Uh, Santa Claus doesn't like milk. Give him Diet Pepsi. <laughs> my mom liked Diet Pepsi, obviously. And you know, we had the Christmas trees, and we had the reindeer, and we would decorate everything from floor to ceiling, and. You know, that, that, that's how I viewed Christmas growing up. That's what I was used to. I was used to this, you know, you decorate yourself in red or green or whatever, right? And, 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 and that's what it was about. There, there was really no uh, solid ground. There was nothing really to be celebrating other than the fact that I'm getting an awesome gift or, you know, I got to go buy an awesome gift, something of that nature to make somebody happy. I, I, that's, that, was, that was the extent of it. But really, until coming to this church did God help me realize through Pastor Wendell what this season really is about and what it should be about. And in Luke chapter 2, verse 9, it says, An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the, but the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. God sent his son to this earth. God sacrificed and gave himself over to us. He gave his son over to us. In Luke chapter 2, verse 10, to go back, 
something kind of stuck out to me. And it's what the angels said to the people. And it's not that I'm worshiping the angels, because, you know, as you know, we're, we're the angel of the Lord, so don't worship me, right? Worship God. But it says, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. And I said, okay, God, you know, what is this joy? What is this about joy and Christmas that we should have? What is this almost, is this a feeling? Is this something I'm supposed to have? How does this work? What is joy? Joy, let me read. I'm phonetically spelling that. Joy is kara. And after doing a little bit of research on kara, you realize that that's not just specifically a rejoicing, right? Rejoicing would be a verb, we're rejoicing. But it is where joy comes from. Joy comes from rejoicing. Joy is this gladness, but gladness about what? We're so glad we have this gladness in us. We have this thing in us, but what do we have in us that we're rejoicing over? What do we have in us that we have joy over? And funny enough, like most of the words that I've been researching lately, I don't know why this is happening, but funny enough, from here, oops, being dyslexic. Is the word charis. Out of rich, you know that one. Charis. God's grace. What is grace? How does this apply? God's grace. What is grace, really? You know, I wanted to research a little bit further because... I thought that my understanding was a little bit shallow. It, 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 it wasn't deep enough. And so I actually went to the Hebrew for it. And it's chen, showing favor. When you think of that, all of a sudden it's a different definition to you. It's not just grace as we understand it, but it's where God is starting to show favor towards his people. Like, if you define favor, it's Liking someone or something, an act of kindness beyond what is normal, what is due, what is usual. It's giving something. This is God showing us favor. He loves us so much. He has so much kindness beyond what's normal. He wants to give us something. This is God's grace. This is how God establishes joy in our hearts. This is where God gives us his act of forgiveness. That's what God's grace is all about. God's grace is the act of forgiveness that he wants to give us and that he has given us. And see, that's the point. That's all wrapped up into what the Christmas is all about. When we realize that in favor, God is truly, oops, giving us something God is truly wanting us to have something and God honoring what he said he would do by sending his son, by sending his very one and only son. I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that. Sending your only son to this earth to accomplish but to suffer the consequences of what sin that we have, that he didn't do, that we have. And that is how grace is understood. God is so loving of us. He wants to show us that favor. So because of that, because of this grace, because of this understanding of what God truly has done for us, because we were yet sinners at one time, we're still sinning, but we are saved because of the grace of God. We are saved and forgiven because God sent his son. We don't have to worry 
when we die and go to heaven. We don't have to worry that we're going to have to be responsible for all of the sin that we have done, not just in the past, but in the future as well. That's where favor is coming from. When you realize the depth and understand how loving and how graceful God is, is when you start to understand what joy is. Because joy is the act of rejoicing for God, being glad that God has shown you favor, that God has had grace fall upon you. You guys know what rapture means? You ever look up rapture in the dictionary because it doesn't exist in the Bible? Rapture means great joy. That's what rapture means. It's great joy. When we ascend to the heavens, when we are called back to God, when God returns back to this earth, and we are rising up from this ground, and we're being transformed and changed in an instant, we will have great joy. We will have great gladness. Because we know when we are ascending, we don't have to worry about our sins that we had done. We don't have to worry about all of the things that happen here on earth anymore. That's great joy. See, in the Christmas season, we sing a lot of Christmas songs. But none of them really had any understanding until I started to research this word, joy. And one of the first songs that obviously came up was Joy to the World. And let me just read the first uh, verse for you. And it says, joy to the world. Joy, imagine that. God extending his grace. God freely giving us something that we don't really deserve. Joy to the world. The Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room and heaven and nature sing. See, all of a sudden the words are different. They don't mean the same thing anymore. They don't, they're not just another Christmas carol that we're going out and singing. And I thought, okay God, that's really good and I understand this, but I still love Christmas. I wear red, you know, I, lo I, I love Christmas. That's just me, that's how I am. Like, I, I, I just exude this, this Christmasness and people either like it or don't like it, right? There are people that love Christmas and go through all these, you know, crazy things, but there are other people too that, uh, not necessarily calling them the Scrooge, but, you know, they've had things that happen, you know? Uh, the Riscos lost their mother during this time frame. I don't know, you know, I'm sure you're joyful, for Christmas, but you know, you, obviously mourning the loss of your mother as well. There's two ways of looking at it, right? So I'm like, okay, God, what about this? How does this all work? What is, what is the whole point to this message? Why, I, I understand that we're supposed to be joyful, but so as Christians, how are we supposed to be reacting during this time and during this season? What are we supposed to be doing? In Colossians chapter 2, verse 8, it says, See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and elemental spiritual forces or principles of this world rather than on Christ. I was thinking of Santa, because I used to love Santa. I couldn't wait for Santa. I couldn't wait for my gift. I used to get two. My parents were separated, right? My parents were divorced. I would get one for my mom and one for my dad. Couldn't wait for it. What I realized is, uh, it's kind of funny. If you think of the devil's work and what he would do to remove what Jesus wanted to say here on earth or to do here on earth. And if you think of Santa Claus, what is the number one, or what, 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 is, what is it that good, or what is it that, that boys and girls are supposed to be? They're supposed to be good, right? 
Boys and girls need to be good so that they can get a gift. Otherwise, if they are bad, they get what? Coal, a lump of coal. That's not what God is saying. That's not the type of gift that God gives. God doesn't care if you were good or bad. He cares in the belief that you believe in Him. He is forever going to show us favor because He loves us, as long as we are reaching back out to Him. Kind of leads me to my next point. What is joy without faith? What is joy without faith? 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6 says, In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy for you are received the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. What is joy without faith? We gotta believe. We gotta believe that this is true. We gotta believe that this is not a specific Christmas story, but a Christmas past that actually happened. Because once we have the faith in God, we can have our joy within us. And when we are giving gifts, instead of like Santa Claus where we choose only the good and the bad, we are extending our love for the people that we are giving those gifts to. When you think about uh, Christmas trees or decorations even, it's not about the Christmas tree. It's definitely not about the Santa Claus or the reindeer in the front. Sorry, Jess. I know you love reindeer. It is about God. Put a nativity scene in there. Be that light. Show how you love God, and this is the reason for the season. Christ. Christ is the reason for Christmas, or Christmas, however you want to pronounce it when we are celebrating this year, or as we are going forth, we're in December now, remember why we're here. Remember why we're Christian is because we want to emulate God. And while doing the things that we're doing, buying gifts, decorating the house, or singing Christmas songs here at church or outside, Remember what it is that God did for you. Remember that God came to this earth as a little boy, as a baby wrapped in cloths. But for the reason of dying for our sins. But this is the time that we're celebrating his birth. This is the time that we're celebrating Jesus coming here and, being, and having the people be so joyous, have so much gladness in their heart that God truly came to this earth. All right? Let's all pray. Father, joy, inexpressible joy. We long for the rapture that you will send to this earth to return home to you. But, but while we're still here on earth, Lord, we, during this season, while everyone else around us celebrates Christmas differently, we would like to celebrate it the way that honors you. Where we rejoice in the grace that you have extended to us, the favor that you have shown us. And through gift giving, through decorating, through 
singing Christmas songs, Lord, that we honor you with our lips and with our whole being. Thank you, Lord, so much for coming to this earth. Thank you so much, Lord, for sacrificing yourself. Merry Christmas. In Jesus' name, amen.